once a week with the gloves and a mask and worried about bringing some shit back to her, trying to um, stay safe. And then just in the last two weeks, we've uh, we've loosened up a little bit, and uh, my mother and I are going for walks around my neighborhood every day. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's incredible. There's this this neighborhood in West Hollywood. It's been there for a hundred years, so there's plant life that's been there for a hundred years, and there's just it's these like desert plants and palms and flowers and um, uh, just it's just so much beauty uh, walking around the neighborhood. It's really really, really lovely. So uh, I had a nice day walking around the neighborhood with my mom. Good. It wasn't too hot. It was it was kind of miserable here. Uh, I was doing like it was it was hopping from shade shade tree to shade tree where I was at. So. I'm, um, you know, down in central Texas. So you know what that's like. You grew up in Florida um, it, and it's, it's May and it already feels like July. So I'm kind of terrified uh, <laughs> what summer's going to feel like, but, um, but definitely getting out of the house and, and having everything's a little slower right now, as far as like traffic. And I mean, uh, you, you obviously live in, in, you know, the metropolitan uh, but but I work in that in that sort of region, and uh, I still notice there's just very little traffic, and um, walking seems to be uh, probably the most, um, you know, the best way to keep your sanity really right now, uh, since you can't do anything else. I mean, uh, there's no parking lots aren't open to anything if you go to a beach or, <laughs> or whatever, so they don't want you yeah. there regardless. <clears throat> so, uh, your mother does she keep up pretty good? I mean, you know, is she is she's it's pretty spry. Well, I mean, it, uh, she's pretty. She's she's very uh, healthy and um, fit, mm-hmm. shall we say? She's traveled everywhere uh, with you. So. You know, I mean, we're just you know sauntering around. Uh, it's it's somewhere between a meander and a saunter. That's our speed. So <laughs> perfect. We're not we're, we're not racing each other to the stop sign or anything. Mm, like that. The stop and smell the roses speed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> well, that's great, man. I um I spent the week kind of just listening to old stuff and uh catching up on on just random things uh, just some of your random TV appearances down the road. Oh, cool. right, I forgot one thing. So you listen to old things but you're you're going to segue this into talking about me. Uh my mother and I are halfway through the Ken Burns country music <clears throat> um documentary mm-hmm. and I've got a massive vinyl record collection. So uh, we've been listening to, you know, so we're watching that now. It just like, it, it just ended with Johnny Cash and Loretta Lynn and Buck Owens and Charlie pride. But, you know, it starts off with like Jimmy Rogers and, uh, I've got Jimmy Rogers records. So, uh, it, it we, we, I've been playing a lot of old classic country albums and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> so, but you haven't been like prying stories out of your mom and she hasn't been prying stories out of you. I mean, it seems like this would be like the perfect time to, I mean, even if it's not public, just documenting all that, you know, behind the mic, you know? Well, I've been uh, doing my uh, podcast with my mother. Every week. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But they're, <clears throat> you know, I know your We're conversations talking- are endless. We've seen, and then oh, we've seen uh-huh. a ton of art documentaries and, um, you know, we're getting quite the university education. So. Yeah, the Corona University. It's a great idea. Do you know this? Do you know this Jimmy Rogers song? He says, um, "I'd rather drink muddy water and sleep in a hollow log. I'd rather drink muddy water and sleep in a hollow log I don't. than stay in Atlanta and be treated like a dirty dog." He says it's T for Texas, T for Tennessee. T for Texas, T for Tennessee, T for Thelma, the girl who made a fool out of me. Do you know that too? I do. I do. I didn't know those were all the words, but I, it's funny. You know, the T for Texas, T for Tennessee are the two things that I picked up on. <clears throat> Such a badass. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got to do some digging, man. No, I've been loving all the, the things you've been throwing at me uh, or just, you know, your uh, your smart camp. In general, it's so it's so good to to listen to somebody like you who um, has this this library that you're constantly pulling books out of that are just this mat either history or art or yes the Rhodes Library, yeah man it's incredible it, it, that is incredible and these are all things that that you have uh, selected 
right? These aren't yeah, things that these nice looking uh, volumes. My father belonged to this. Um, I forget what company did it, but it was like this book of the month club mm -hmm. and books have illustrations and they've got these gold leaf um, outer leaves uh, pages. Those I got after my father died. The rest of these books I've purchased and collected myself going to bookstores uh, my whole life and, you know, garage sales and flea markets. And that's my vinyl record collection. Oh, my God. Is that Ernest Tubbs Golden Favorites? <laughs> oh, are you listening to Roy Acuff? And there's the Jimmy Rogers. I got, like, got the Loretta Lynn out. Yeah. Don't come home with drinking with loving on your mind. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Snow. Getting into the real, um, real old, old country. Mm hmm. Yeah, that primitive <clears throat> country. I love it. That's where I'm from, man. It's actually the, the cowboy capital of the world, quote unquote. So at any given moment, wait, before. Texas What's that? Um, Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys. That was, um, uh episode two yeah man yeah. um well the swing and the fun to country music yeah so you've you were talking about um your on the the artist documentary you were talking about van gogh and um just basically the plight of the artist you know and uh i find that that's that's extremely relatable across all platforms I feel like if you don't just dedicate yourself to a, a, a trade or a, you know, a slave job, I know you say Tom Rhodes is your slave name, but I, I feel like that's, you know, you've somehow broken the chains, man. You've broken the chains. You've, you've used your, your surname to, uh, I don't know, man, to bring so much light and, and something, something completely different almost every time you, uh, you put yourself in that, in that, that spotlight. I, I just did, like I said, digging through your collection and to where you are now, it, it really is fascinating how much wealth of knowledge you've, you've collected enough to go all over the world and, and speak directly to these people and, and gain that, um, uh, I guess, that trust from that audience to know, like, no, this guy's not bullshitting us. He's been here. He's, he's experienced this, what he's talk, uh, talking about, you know, and uh, I know there's there's very few places you have been and, and uh, I'm very envious of your of your uh your passport I, I my bucket list is just like it's all these places argentina i i remember seeing something where you were down at a in a uh, uh farmer's market in argentina just eating tomatoes right out of the <laughs> the farmer's market and oh yeah oh yeah that was in patagonia actually in Ar uh okay. in argentina <clears throat> uh yeah it was like arugula and fresh uh tomatoes and stuff i remember hearing my that mother is my mother's from Buenos Aires, and I'd wanted wanted to go there. Though my mother came to the United States in 1950, uh, she was a young teen. My family and she moved to Washington D.C., where my family is originally from. Uh, we moved to Orlando, <clears throat> actually a small town outside of Orlando called Oviedo, when I was 12. And my whole life, I wanted to go to Argentina, and I've got cousins there, so um, I've been there three times now, and. Uh, I went there on my 40th birthday and I took, I wanted to do the tango on my 40th birthday in Buenos Aires. And I was only as good as, um, four lessons can get you, but you know, I, it, I, I did what I had dreamt of doing. Uh, and at that time, my cousin Fernando, um, lived in Patagonia in, uh, um, little town called, uh, El Basone. <clears throat> and uh, and I went there and then he so he had this it was he would go get the fresh ingredients for his restaurant from these like farmers. Yeah, it was really I spent like a week in Patagonia and it looks like northern California had it never been developed. They're just mountains and freshwater lakes and, uh, you know, and they got that cowboy thing in Argentina, too. But they they dress uh, a little more. Uh, uh, there's a little more scarf happening. <laughs> the Argentinian cowboy than the Texas cowboy. A little more flair in the mm -hmm. britches. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, that was that, that was an incredible experience. The he drove me around to the best spots, and um, you know, and then he also had to run his restaurant, and it was pretty awesome. 
it's kind of crazy, man, that, that seeing that, I mean, this must have been, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago I saw this video. And it, I, I've wanted to move there ever since, just seeing the enjoyment of you enjoying this environment it just seems so wholesome and so um i don't know it, it, it almost it almost looked like uh you were about to pack up and move down there you know it just felt so uh the way you were enjoying those vegetables i'm like dude i just <laughs> I, it, yeah I, now that you're saying that i do remember uh you mentioning that your brother-in-law uh or, or was it your yeah your brother-in-law right uh, provided the restaurant with these fresh vegetables. I mean, no, he's my cousin. Oh, your cousin. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Fernando. Fernando. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and it, I, I love watching you have fun, man. Going down that big slide. Uh, was that in Taiwan? No, that's at the Great Wall of China. Okay. <clears throat> the the big. Uh, uh... I've been to the Great Wall of China three times. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only there's like three sections where you can go as a tourist to visit the great wall of china but only one has got this uh like toboggan slide down and it takes a good i mean you're going you got this little stick between your legs and you can push it forward to go faster pull back to break it <clears throat> and um it takes a good 10 minutes to get down to the bottom i mean it's a you know it's a long ass slide mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> I, it's one of the greatest things on the planet Earth. I've I've been to the Great Wall three chi China three times. The the second and third time I went was to ride the the slide. <laughs> yeah. What the you know I was happy to see the Great Wall again, but that slide is pretty pimp. So yeah, so I filmed it, um, the entire length of it, and I put it on 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 YouTube, mm -hmm. and I up the video. So it's only like it goes down and like. Um, you know, one or two minutes on the video, but yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. I want people to go watch these videos because you really you do a good enough job in the production explaining all of that. So, um, you know, I just uh, you know, kind of catching up with you. I, there was a, a long period of time um, between seeing you live and then realizing you had your own podcast. I mean, and then I went back and just kind of like caught up through that. And man, it's, it's incredible to me, your network of pe the people that, you know, I mean, it's just like, you're such a, I don't know, like a, a lone wolf in, in from so many, uh, angles it appears, but, um, you've, you've made friends with just about everybody and, and on all sides of the network. I mean, and just the local people, wherever you go, you know, somebody there, like, it's just incredible, man. And you're. You never seem to forget these things. Um, is that some sort of, <laughs> is there something to train your mind like that? Or are you just blessed with a gift where you can just remember who people are? And I mean, they're almost like what language they speak. It's incredible. Um, my father taught me, my, my, my father flew helicopters in Vietnam. <clears throat> he was shot down. Everyone in the helicopter died except for him and his co-pilot, who he dragged across a heavy field under, uh, dragged across a field under heavy fire. And he got like, I think five of these medals are from that incident. Oh my god! So my father, uh, after Vietnam, he was an insurance salesman, and my father taught me the greatest trick. Uh, I don't know it's a trick. It's I think it's just a classy thing to do. I wouldn't even call it a trick. <clears throat> People always love when you remember their name. So some of the best comedy advice I ever got was from my father. Uh, <clears throat> like I, when I was young, I used to go out and try and you know do some tough shit up in the front, you know, <laughs> grab their attention. My dad said, No, no, no. The oldest saying in sales is they'll buy from a friend before they before they will a stranger. If you make friends with the audience first, then later in the show, after you've already made friends with them, then do the the hard shit, <clears throat> which is the best way to 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 operate. So my father also taught me that uh, people really like it when you remember their names, especially when you're in a big group of people. You know, when you're being introduced to like a group of like six or eight people, and and you think and you and you they're going through the line. And you introduce everybody, and then you've you've forgotten by the time you get to the end who these people were. You just 
in your mind, Chuck, and you say to yourself, Chuck, you let it register. And then you move on to the next person, Nancy. And you say it to yourself, Nancy, Chaz, Chaz. And, you, you know, so you, most people just, yeah, okay, da, 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 and then fucking they don't remember anything. But you make a point to remember. I mean, that's when you're meeting people in big groups. Um, <clears throat> I, um, I, do know, I do know a lot of people all around the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've, I've known them for a long time because the, I think the comedy world is pretty small. And uh, I've been doing the international circuits for over 20 years. So a lot of these, you know, places, you know, there's Australian comedians and Canadian comedians, New Zealand comedians. That, you know, you meet them doing comedy festivals through the years or there's periods where you're in New York and guys are coming through New York or London or L.A., San Francisco, Hong Kong, Sydney, <clears throat> uh, Austin, Texas, you know, wherever. Um, and... Uh, you know, as long as uh, you never ask anybody for any favors or, or borrow money, um, then they usually want to stay your friend for a long <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of me, man. I do. I kind of black out. I get a little uh, overwhelmed, I guess, when I'm getting introduced. Anything above six, I'm like, whoa, all right. But that's that's great advice. How, when did, it, when did it, your dad give you it, that it, advice? It's a trick. I'm sorry? What did you say? Uh, I said, when did your dad give you that advice? high school Mm, okay because like i said man you just seem to absorb everything so it's just i guess the trick is just sort of slow it down a little bit and just absorb it a little bit you're giving yourself uh, in your mind uh, a minute to look at someone's face and register what their name is you know and then later when you're talking to somebody it's you know oh nancy uh you mentioned before and people you can see (laughs) people usually shit in their pants when you remember their name it's like it's it's a I mean, and I, it works on me too. Hmm. If I, you, and you don't remember my name five minutes later, I think you're an asshole. <laughs> it's, you know? Yeah, totally. Yep. Like, yeah, I get it. I mean, uh, I, I think for, for a lot of people though, it's, uh, most people go somewhere for, uh, you know, one one reason and uh when they get bombarded with cousins or this is my sister-in-law and meet my sister-in-law there's a part of me that just doesn't want to absorb that and i don't know why like i don't know why i shouldn't just think like okay this person might be somebody that i could come in contact with later there's just a part of me it's like no i'm here to see jim i'm gonna go (laughs) you know everybody else is kind of collateral uh not so much anymore obviously but um but I just, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of blown away every time you, you and your mom sit down and just talk about all these these documentaries and stuff. Just the retaining of all of it. It just blows my mind, man. You, sh- you really should be, at this point, uh, get a tenure somewhere, you know? Uh- <laughs> I'm ready for a university position. Yeah. Uh, well, my, you know, uh, you know the, the other great thing about being... Uh, I, I'm, Another thing about having this special time with my mother, I would never say I was stuck. I, and I almost feel bad that we're having such a good time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my mother and I, because uh, I know so many people are, are suffering and, and, and dying and shit. Uh, but my mother and I are interested in the same thing. She's the reason I love books. She used to take us to the, uh, you know, before when I was a kid, there was no internet, you know, we would go to the library once a month, and whatever the limit was, you could pick four or five books. And I always thought it was amazing. I could go in this building and have any four or five books on any topic that I want, and I get to hang on to it for a month and learn shit. And my mom's really into art, and I'm into art, and so we've, um, you know, we're we're having a good time. We're um, we like the same things because, you know, she uh, taught me to be that way. Well, it's funny, you know, I mean, I, I hear, I, you know, the mature version of, of this relationship and I was kind of, uh, observing your, your comedy in a different light. Cause when I first heard you back in maybe 2006, 2007, uh, the first album that I was introduced to by, uh, our mutual friend, Kat Ramzinski, uh, she gave me a copy of uh, hot, sweet ass. Hot, uh, sweet ass. <laughs> Recorded in Houston, Texas at the last stop. Yeah. 
And just, uh, you know, the energy of that, you know, you can just feel it. This is, this is, you know, this is an album, an album version of, of this comedy. And uh, it was really special. But I also noticed that you were really hard on your parents and the way you, you speak of them now, obviously as a, as a mature adult who's, who's seen far worse, uh, you know, it, it's funny to kind of break, break the, the jokes apart from, from knowing, you know, all, all, uh, about your your parents through through your podcast you know through your your openness about that and and now your mom's openness and and it's just really it's really fascinating man this is such a a cool way to have have uh observed your career my opinion was just to kind of step back look at your albums and then listen to your podcast back to back was just like watching you grow watching tom grow up yeah exactly (laughs) Exactly. God, I got. I got. I was in the time that I did the podcast. I, uh, I got married and divorced, and yeah, um, yeah. It's um. I, I, and then I, I stopped drinking after, you know, I had that experience too, where I busted my head open in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Been a wild man, lunatic, party, uh, you know, booze guzzling, wild man forever, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, yeah, I guess it is interesting to see the, the growth of a human being on that podcast. It's very fascinating. I, I it, it would be uh, it would be really fun to uh, for your, for your mom to just sit back and listen to all that stuff. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> the way you talk about them in the early days is just like it's kind of brutal. But I know I know she's been there for all of it. She knows it all. But. I can't remember what what jokes I wish I. Could. You know the uh, I love the stuff that I relate to the most is the psychological uh, damage being far more permanent than the physical. Oh yeah, you know. that was hilarious. Uh, my parents argued all the time. Yeah, and they got divorced, and they had a very turbulent relationship. Uh, that's that was a great joke that um, my parents argued so much they wore their wedding rings on their middle fingers. <laughs> look at your ring! Look at your ring! And, uh, <laughs> And that was it. The next line was, um, I don't, that's, I don't, that's why I don't understand why anybody would ever beat their children when damaging them psychologically is so much more permanent. <laughs> I relate to that so much, man. My parents would always fight, and then they'd tell me, we love each other. We're not going to ever get divorced. That wasn't being hard on them. That was being a truth, truthful reporter. A hundred percent. No, I, but, but having that aired out on stage as a parent – uh, you know, what from from your young son, <laughs> it's kind of like, all right, hey, you know, we're all gonna look back on this and laugh, but um, you know, but you did such a great job of telling it. I never felt like you were you were ever betraying your parents' love for you. I, I, I you know, I because I, I know jokes, uh, and I, I get that they're jokes. I just thought it was it was really funny, and it's it, it makes it even funnier just to hear how sweet you and your mom are. To, to you know, to each other, and just how how well it all turned out. <laughs> but um, man, did. some gold. There's some gold in your stuff, especially uh, you know your new stuff around the world. I mean, you just it, you just take a little trip, take a little walk to all these little cities. Really yeah, well, then, uh, you know, people who are stuck at home uh, and unable to travel. Mm-hmm. That's a great way. To- travel the world right now is through listening to my around the world album you know came out with it last year it's 24 i recorded it in 24 cities around the world starts in paris ends in jerusalem <clears throat> and it's all mostly jokes and stories about each place yeah you learn something and you laugh along with these people and there's sometimes where it almost feels like uh like i said they're not really trusting you and then you you pop in with something and uh like especially in uh, i believe it was ireland uh, <laughs> I think you earned their trust with the, uh, there's some beautiful women here <laughs> in Ireland <laughs> and I got you, uh, sometimes I go to Liverpool just to rest my eyes. <laughs> oh, uh, no, that was it. no, it was the, <clears throat> they loved the joke in Ireland. It's like a joke that they go nuts for in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, cause they, they have so much resentments towards the English cause the English <laughs> tried, you know, exterminate them. Um, I lived in in Holland, in Amsterdam for five years, and the women are beautiful in Holland. I'm serious. When I lived there, every once in a while, I would have to go to England just to rest my eyes. Holland, yes, sir. You know your jokes, but way better than me. I, I, I. But 
that joke works stronger in Ireland than it does anywhere. So yeah, it's on one of the it's on the Dublin track. You're right. Okay. All right. Mike, man, I, I've I've heard some of these jokes so many times, and some of them I was just surprised I've never heard these jokes today. Especially I was listening to some of your stuff and just like blown away. Like how have I not caught this stuff? Which ones? Um, mm. All right. So. <laughs> oh. Um, one of the things you said in passing, I thought was funny. This actually wasn't on your album. This was, it, it actually, I feel like it was on your album, but you, you made just a sly remark and you were getting peppered in this interview you were having in China, I believe. And you had mentioned something about how messed up our, our Congress is or how, how our system is and how, uh, we should have. Um, all of our elections in an arena where we're allowed to heckle and hiss. I believe yeah. that was on an album as well, but but what, what reminded was me like, of it? I think a long time ago, like that they should build stands in Congress and mm -hmm. uh, and they should have trading cards with the voting yes. record, the, the congressman on the back, <clears throat> and then we should be allowed to, to heckle and, and throw everything. That's so. amazing. I mean, that's it's so funny, but it, I, it, imag <laughs> I like imagine a, that. that I tried to develop it. And I never felt like I quite got it right. And that's still, that's like, uh, even still in my mind, that joke for me is like, um, you, you, you bought a, a great old car that has, uh, you know, the body's great, but you don't have any engine or wheels for it. And like, you want to get a, one day you want to get around to like, you know, uh, souping it up and making it a hot rod. I, it's such a great premise. It is. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't really think it's ever really had the light, like you said, to, to really be developed, but in passing, God, just the imagery of that, it makes so much sense and it's hilarious. It really caught my attention. Uh, a, a lot of the stuff that, uh, comes up the, um, uh, you know, the Kung Fu and the karate kick, um, kick, baby. yeah. Yeah. So did that start as like a kind of a making fun of Elvis sort of thing and just sort of taking on that energy or, I did this joke, and I think it's one of the best jokes I've ever written. And I did it on my <clears throat> second Comedy Central half-hour special. And then a year after I did it on Comedy Central, John Oliver did it on The Daily Show. The joke almost verbatim. So, like, I felt like I had to – I stopped doing it, and then I um, I, I stopped doing it. Not, not, like, a few people um, said that uh, – uh, like – I did this uh, Joe Rogan show and some woman tweeted at me, you know, I don't know why people put so much importance on Twitter. You still have one of his joke. And then I didn't know what she was talking about. And then I investigated and then I, uh, I found out that he had done the joke almost verbatim on the daily show a year after I had already done it on comedy central. Mm -hmm. And that's when I, that comedy central really doesn't give a fuck. I mean, I know John Oliver didn't take it, but one of his writers took the joke. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I, I had already done it on, on, the, on the same network. So, you know, there's your proof. But and I, and I, I think it was one of the best jokes I had, I had ever written up to that point. And um, uh, I think Elvis is the perfect metaphor for the United States because Elvis started out young and sexy and innovative and then he became all fat and disgusting and bloated uh, and wearing the Vegas jumpsuit uh, I'm fucking up the joke then he became all fat disgusting and bloated and I think that's where the United States is now we're in our fat Vegas jumpsuit Elvis period too fucked up to know that the audience isn't digging us anymore uh, my uh, my audience loves me, man. I can do anything. Karate kick, baby. Oh, did <laughs> my hero do a karate kick? Sigh. And so that was the that was the joke. And um, so people, my listeners to the to the podcast, who loved that joke, they um, or, no, no, I think that it, it was on the original uh, intro of the of the because I used to have a different song at the beginning. And so the guy that put sliced together my original theme song put that at the end. And it said, after at the end of Welcome to Tom Rhodes Radio, and I'll take you to Peru, and I'll take you to Russia, da 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 da. At the very end of that, it said, it was taken from that joke, and it said, Karate Kick, baby. <clears throat> so then 
uh, people who would write me who listen to the podcast, they kept saying, and they would say it on Twitter and social media, they kept saying karate kick to me. So it, it kind of uh, became like, um, like an inside thing for, for people who listen to my thing. Well, I love it because it is an homage to you being the king of haha. He is the comedian. You bring it up, and the first thing I think is, motherfucking John Oliver did my shit. Yeah, but, you know, we all know the chronology, man. It's all been around, you know, especially in that circuit. Check the tape. Check the tape. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was developing that in clubs in America for five years leading up to that special, you know. I had done it on other TV shows, too. Yeah. Well, I heard Comedy Central got dissolved or something like that. I don't know. What? what, what I mean, what's that? When? Um, it was on the uh, Bill Burt podcast, I believe, uh, the most recent episode. They had put out something that said that they were, uh, that it was an end of an era with Comedy Central. And um, that was the rumor floating around. So. What, are they ending? I, I, you know, it, you know, those guys just kind of, especially it was coming out of Bert's mouth. So, you know, it was probably just the headline. He probably just read the headline and I'm not doing any good regurgitating it. Um, but if you don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I haven't been paying attention to the, the news since, um, well, we were all advised to inject Clorox. <laughs> and sunshine. I think it's it's probably best to avoid uh, the advice of our leaders right now. I don't know, man. You know, burn off the dead wood. Inject the cleaner. Karate kick, baby. (laughs) Straight up, though. But, I mean, it really is, especially now more than ever. People are, you know, the belly's kind of hanging out of the popped button. And uh, all the sequins is kind of falling off. People are starting to kind of see. Like, we don't really have it all together over here. Um, I know I, I, I often just kind of slip down that rabbit hole of, uh, and and I immediately have to grab the edges and pull myself back up sort of just thinking about how trapped so many people are and how they just don't understand how accessible, um, you know, good conversation or, or laughter or, or just zoom or Skype. I mean, these things that I think people are so socially terrified that they've given them like they're harder on themselves now. I think this should be a time where we are learning stuff and we're learning about ourselves and regardless of our financial situation, I think that, um, this will pass, you know, um, we're thriving people and we're, we're adaptable people. So I'm not really scared. I agree. And, um, you know, the human race has survived a lot worse Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, it's, it's not as bad as, um, everyone suspected it would be. So, you know, I'm sorry a lot. Of, I mean, I've, I, a friend of mine, Vic Henley, died in, in New York, and there's a comedian. It's all fun and games until people you know um, start dropping dead. Yeah, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but I mean, this is, this is our, um, our moment in history to, you know, tough it up and make yourself a better person somehow. I agree. Yeah, I agree right now more than ever. I mean, you, you've got this little cocoon. Most people do. Uh, even the people that work, I mean, they've got a, a sick note right now. I just, I, I woke up coughing, you know, <laughs> you can work on yourself. <clears throat> All right. So, um, I am, so, I'm not good with segues. I don't even really try. Uh, one of the things that I thought was funny is how you kind of break your jokes apart and, and what you used to do. You, uh, the last one I saw posted was three years ago, uh, but you would post knowledge nuggets. And those were kind of directly kind of from your uh, a lot of those were were actual little facts attached to, you know, original jokes. So did you feel like you were just kind of giving that stuff away or uh, what? Maybe what was the reason why it stopped? I, I thought that was a really fun little. It was fun. It was a weekly little fun. Thing. It was a great project and uh, I'd like to get it going again. I was doing it with my wife. And. <clears throat> We would do it in my living room here, and we would be doing it – a lot of times we'd be – you know, I was trying to put it out every Friday. Mm-hmm. So I, I think I made like 51, 56 knowledge nuggets, and a lot of times we would be racing the sunlight. A lot of times my scripts would be longer than um, necessary, 
and she'd say, you need to cut this and move that to the end. And I'd go, well, fuck it then. We won't put one out this week. And, you know, we'd get into like some thing. And um, th- there was a um, anyway, it was it was it, 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 it was uh, I had to take a break from it for a little while. And uh, <laughs> it got I, a little tainted. I think we, her, you know, and her advice was right most of the time. And um, I think we made some really great ones. And uh, a lot of people really love those knowledge nuggets. And uh, I'd like to get it rolling again. Um, so I'm I'm kind of secretly collecting different factoids and knowledge nuggets to because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm constantly learning things, <clears throat> I'm constantly reading and watching you know, documentaries, you know, um, uh, you know, I could bore you with a hundred country music facts right now. So (laughs) (laughs) uh, Charlie pride was traded. He played minor league baseball. He was traded for a bus. Wow. Wow. What was the (laughs) Willie Nelson? When he moved to Nashville, he had hocked his guitar so many times. He said that, the guy who owns the pawn shop could play his guitar better than him. Man. Yeah. That's that's starving artist right there. And look where he's at. <clears throat> See, I love uh, I love knowledge nuggets and things like that and uh I got a lot of it in my in my comedy. I, I like uh I I like comedy that you can also learn from, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what that's why I, I your stuff's always been like uh highbrow but understandable. Does that make sense? Like, uh, oh, that's nice. there's, uh, that, I had, I had a, a woman in Boston once told me, uh, uh, I cursed too much to ever be considered an intellectual. See, I, I feel like you're just the right kind of intellectual. The one that's uh, experienced intellectual, not somebody <laughs> that's book learned, you know, you're yeah. both. So I feel like that all, that all just comes out. Well, I didn't go to university. I did it all on my own, you know, the hard knocks. traveling and reading. I mean, I, not hard knocks, so the in fun knocks. <laughs> you know? Like when I go to different countries, I like to <clears throat> learn about it. And uh, I like to go down weird little rabbit holes. Like I just read Napoleon's um, biography. <clears throat> um, I was going to do a podcast on it, but there's just so many details. I'll get around to it. Yeah, that's a whole Patreon series or something, you know, for the the, the amount of stuff you're going to put into it. Glad I read it. I know a lot, but I mean, you know, it's, you know, you're torn between was he a great guy or just a fucking douche, you know? Yeah. I think that's really funny how, you know, we were talking. You... Similar feeling most Americans are having, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, very relatable. Is he great or fucking <clears throat> Yeah, who knows? I mean, it's like I keep hearing over and over, he's a genius. No, he's a genius, you know? And you're like, like what am I missing? Like, he looks crazy. They say the same <laughs> thing about Kanye. <laughs> oh, dude, I know. You're right. And and I have I know that, that your, uh, your lady has sort of got you into Kanye. I have not been convinced. Well, you can listen to Kanye. I, okay, I'm going to have to go back to, you know... To the start, I guess, because I, I kind well, of hopped in uh, with the Jesus thing. Late registration. Uh, it's the it's the three college records. Those are the those are the best ones. And then uh, my dark, twisted, beautiful fantasy. That one. <clears throat> I think those are the three. Okay. I haven't heard the haven't heard the new Jesus record, but um, as I've sifted through his stuff, I'd say those are those those three are like well, they are genius. Yeah. They are. Genius. That's what I hear, and uh, I'm kind of scared of it in a way. Maybe it's I'm scared I won't understand it. I'm gonna miss the point, you know. Um, that that comes a lot of stuff kind of hits me like that. A lot of comedy hits me like that. Um, your stuff I always feel like it's taken from a place where you are passing on a wisdom, uh, and you're sharing an experience. And maybe that experience is exaggerated, but there's so much truth in it that it becomes sort of an everyman thing. Uh, one of the things that I I remember Thanks. hearing about you um, from Kat was she was t- saying uh, this is the first time I saw you live. I remember thinking like, man, he's got uh, Mitch Mitch mannerisms. And Mitch had already passed at this point. And I remember her saying, no, 
Mitch sort of, uh, you know, uh, use your energy to sort of help him, uh, his, his character, I guess, uh, his confidence level. Um, and I thought I found that fascinating because it wasn't, I never felt like he ripped you off. I always felt truly like a sensei and protege here. And, um, seeing how, how you've come so far from that, from that delivery, to where you are now where you're just so well spoken and it's it's almost like like i said man if you were if you had a class <laughs> where it was just you know <laughs> roads 101 uh you just you have that demeanor where you're able to really keep an audience i feel like your audience when they come to a show they're there to laugh and learn it just the two go hand in hand and that's kind of how i feel like you've developed your podcast that's how you've always done your travel series um, you're just not this bombarding presence. You've, you've definitely have something clever to say, but you're not, you know, bum rushing anybody with your jokes. So it's that, that's why I've always enjoyed it personally. So. That's, that's a beautiful compliment. And, uh, you know, uh, well, thank God for evolution and evolving, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I, I loved Mitch Hedberg like a brother and, um, <clears throat> we worked together a lot <clears throat> in Houston at the Laugh Stop in that period when I did the Hot Sweet Ass album. Mitch did his Strategic Grill Locations album. Hedberg did his first album there. Louis C.K. did his first album there. Uh, that club in Houston was one of the greatest clubs uh, in the history of stand-up comedy. And Mark Babbitt, the manager, had microphones put in um, to, to record... Uh, the audience, the room was mic'd. Yeah. So that's why we recorded there. And the audiences were smart and amazing. <clears throat> um, but, you know, man, uh, you know, I, I had the sitcom and then I moved to, um, you know, to New York and then I moved to Amsterdam. I got in with London and then <clears throat> lived in Amsterdam Had the late night talk show and then a travel show on Dutch television. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. You, you, you have to evolve. And um, I'm, uh, I'm I'm enjoying being 53 and the human being that I am today. Yeah. Did you did that ever bother you? I mean, did anybody ever like point that out and be like, hey, who's you know, who's on to who here? And did that ever bother you? Or was it just like, no, man, this is if this is what <laughs> it takes, this is what it takes. Uh, what do you mean about the Hedberg comparison? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I never um, I've ever heard you talk about continually that. through the years and um, especially on the Internet. Uh, I've I've read all kinds of, um, you know, stupid and hateful things. Mm, yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you know, it. it Hedberg's dead and he's an all time classic comedian and, um, you know, little kids and grandmas love, uh, his stuff. So, um, you know, I had different feelings about it. I wasn't bothered by that really. I, I was bothered by the fact that he dove so hard into heroin and that our friendship was kind of put on hold the last couple years of his life. So like when people would say, Hey man, you, you sound like Hedberg my feeling wasn't like um my to hear his name only reminds me of uh the pain i felt of losing a guy a friend that i loved so much hmm. you know yeah i understand so, that but, definitely you know, <clears throat> when i met him he sounded like a guy from minnesota <laughs> yeah you yeah know? it's true i i think it, the comparison would just be made like a jazzy black man when we met you know, and and I was the long haired dude. I was on Comedy Central and um, I just they, they're going to do a, a Hedberg tribute on Sirius XM. And I got to tell all of my best Hedberg stories. And, um, you know, like when he I met him in Seattle, he was too bashful to to talk to me. Hmm. He was like such a fan. He sent his girlfriend came over, uh, his girlfriend, Jenna, and she said, my boyfriend's a big fan. And. He's too bashful to come over. Would you mind coming over? He was a comedian. Uh, you know, would would you, you know, and we hung out. He was a great, and we've been, you know, 
hit it off beautifully. But, um, you know, he always uh, he always treated me like I was, um, you know, uh, royalty, comedy yeah. royalty. He seemed like a sweet guy, man, on the surface. Just, you know, that's uh, there's so much you've seen so much, you've experienced so much, uh, you know, loss and love. Um, I think you're just the observational uh, aspect of your comedies is probably the biggest thing to compare you guys to. I think you, you both have a gift for that. There's so many things that, that you've said throughout your comedy that you just, it, it happens throughout the day. Something will happen. It'll make me think of, of a joke. Yeah. You know? And that, I think that's, that's kind of like a, a hit in other words, uh, you know, that's your, uh, that's your stinger is, uh, to be able to connect on that level where it just becomes kind of an everyday you're thinking of, <laughs> of how to make that funny. My sister, yeah. my sister, we love, we both loved comedy. Um, my family really loved stand up comedy. My father loved prior and everything. And then, so like within my family, but especially between me and my sister, cause we were the closest, like when a line or, uh, a, a joke of a comedian becomes a regular thing in your vernacular like we would use expressions of of comedians or 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 lines um that we heard comedians say when we were like kids and teenagers growing up and i think that's like the greatest compliment you could ever get is like you know i've had people write me beautiful emails and say you know um you know some guy wrote me <clears throat> not long ago about the mix the races joke and he said the first time he ever heard that joke he knew he wasn't going to end up with uh with a white woman <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome right and he's just, you know the guy just wrote me some nice email <clears throat> yeah i um man it's it sucks because i i a lot of like the funniest joke um I don't know why it sticks in my head, dude. I don't even want to talk about it because it's just too revealing about my own character. Uh, <laughs> let's. Uh, <laughs> I wrote so much stuff down that I wanted to talk to you about, and I really just I'm like, man, I've just enjoyed this conversation. I kind of just want to shut these uh, these yeah. notes off. I mean, and <clears throat> and it's it's really amazing to me how you've uh, continued to hold on to these relationships. I mean. You haven't you haven't gone off. You've gone sober, and you've still remained sort of in the scene that would uh, you know lure you back in in a way. And you've you've held your ground, and I think it's just kept you on your game. I mean, it's uh, to me, I feel like you've you've strengthened your armor, being able to uh, continue to work around all that. Uh, you know, um, I guess things that would that would drag you away from your pain. You know, it's kind of always in your face. So. Well, giving up the booze uh, definitely made me sharper <clears throat> uh, a comedian. And I got, you know, I got, uh, uh, you know, more, you know, I'm, I can think of more jokes and stories churning in my head than when I was um, half in the bag. But, um, you know, I loved it all, to be honest with you. You know, I loved the, the you know, the, the drug period and the boozing period and the, traveling the world period and the smarty pants period and you know the guy who's close to his mom i took my mother to israel period you know uh <clears throat> you know um i i i i i think that to be a great comedian you got to have great experiences <clears throat> or interesting experiences they don't have to be great just you know story worthy i mean the the most valuable thing that any of us have to give is our story so I always thought you needed to live somewhat of an adventurous life. And I love books and um, the, my heroes were, you know, uh, you know, people who uh, traveled and went places and experienced things. So, well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, sharing that with everybody. You know, I know it's not um, it's not something that's required of you. It's 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 really is special that you've sort of just continued to do this. And like I said, I've I've really enjoyed watching the evolution from afar. And I will as long as you're here, man. And I'm glad that you're healthy and I'm glad that you're sober because that's more of you. Than we're going to get hopefully, hopefully. Right. That's best yeah. case scenario. Yeah, for a little while. You know, I mean, who knows, you know, who knows where, uh, you know, I, I want to go 10 years without drinking and then we'll see what's what's going to happen then, All you right, know, man. so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, life is life is beautiful, and I'm glad that I've, 
travel the world now um, because it looks like people aren't going to be able to travel for a while. So, mm -hmm. well, they can they can uh, travel through you, man. So go go look at at your. Uh, I'm encouraging everybody right now. Go watch Tom's YouTube channel. Just take a dive, travel the world, with Tom. <laughs> and, cool. Uh, and I, the world that I came out with last year, and then uh, and I'm working on uh, a book of my best travel stories. So um, hopefully I'll be able to publish that in the next year or so. Yeah. Well, um, if you do a Kickstarter or something, man, I'll I'll throw in. Never, on it. So, never do a Kickstarter. Never Just buy the book when it's out. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. Well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll pre save it. You sure it. don't hit any of those uh, questions you prepared? Uh, mm, mm, all right. I'm gonna be sorry I brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There was something really funny. I saw the uh, the interview you did where you just kind of hung out with Tenacious D in Amsterdam. <clears throat> that was on my late night talk show in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every episode. <clears throat> sorry. Forgive me. My voice. Um. Hang on a second. Every episode on the late night talk show I had in Amsterdam, I was a, a foreigner experiencing Dutch culture. So every episode I would film a five minute film uh, where I would, you know, I spent a day with a Dutch farmer. I, I, um, I, I got to cover the prime minister debates. I was given a tour of the gay nightlife scene of Amsterdam, the red light district by a former um, prostitute and Tenacious D was going to be in town. They're doing a concert and uh, I'm old friends with Jack Black. I remember when they started doing that act uh, at, at Largo in LA. And uh, I even saw them at the Viper room once, like when they were like, probably like, I'd say that one of the probably the, within their first 10 shows they ever recorded or tried or anyway, the first year anyway. So I've known Jack Black for years and uh, for the, Five minute film that week, and that's what I put on YouTube. I mm -hmm. uh, giving them <clears throat> a tour of of Amsterdam, and so the late the the um, you know the the late night talk show the network paid for a, a canal boat to take us around, and you know I took them to a coffee shop and we smoked up and took them to the Heineken factory and uh, it's a really really fun video. And yeah. so like they wanted to pretend like. I didn't know them. It's television. People always fuck things up. Um, they were, they wanted me to pretend like I, 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 I just met them and I was giving them a tour of Amsterdam. And then Jack Black says at the end, I know we were supposed to pretend like we didn't know each other, but you know, it's good to see an old friend, yeah. like something like that at the end of it. Yeah. I, I thought it was cute. I just, you know, it's, it was just one of those things where I'm like, dude, you literally know everybody. Holy shit, Tom! <laughs> You're tied to everything. Um, I, I I was gonna tell people about you know your sitcom, how you had your own talk show, how you had your own travel show. I mean, you're just the most humble dude for for everything that you've done. Uh, for, to just sit back and hang out and talk about books and art and country music and I mean, dude, you're just awesome. You're just awesome. I don't I don't want to sit here and shower you and stuff. I know that's uncomfortable, but. <laughs> I'm just I'm just proud of you, Tommy. I'm proud of you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you about national parks and stuff, but I've already kept you too long and I'm sure you've already told those stories a million times. I just I thought no. it was funny. I'll share with you something. How about this? Okay, I, go ahead. You were talking about Yosemite <laughs> and and how beautiful it was and how you've yeah. gone there three times at your favorite park. I went one time and I had no idea that there was clusters of missing people in that park. And it, I found out then. So my experience was this. I show up and I'm, it's beautiful. And I, I get out of the car and I run down a hill because I have to go to the bathroom. My wife has some insight. I don't know. Apparently she's holding this from me because she doesn't want to give me anxiety. That there's just Yosemite apparently has the largest cluster of missing people in the United States. They're, they're in Crater Lake, <laughs> Oregon. Um, wow. And the national parks will not release the list of missing people. So I go running down this uh, hill to go to the bathroom and just sort of take in the, the majesty as well. And she comes running after me in a panic. I, I think somebody's after her with a knife. And she's just terrified that I'm going to get sucked up by aliens or just go missing or whatever, whatever it is. 
And uh, so I, that terrified her so much, we basically just drove through Yosemite. Uh, we didn't even stay. <laughs> she was terrified I was going to do something stupid like like go behind a tree and never get seen again or something. So, uh, but But hearing your stories... <clears throat> one of the nicest of our national parks. It was the first national park. Hmm. And uh, you need, should go in the springtime when the waterfalls are, are uh, raging in Yosemite Valley. It's very nice. I did but you want to go before the summer hits and too many people get out there. I, this was in October. So it was right before the, you know, like the actual snow. snow. So we were able to see the bridal veils, I believe is what yeah. that, the big one Bridal veil is beautiful. Yeah, we didn't go up close, uh, but we just we just observed it from we yards. Drove away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we drove through. We actually got out. We got out. <clears throat> um, but ha- how about Yellowstone? Have you been to Yellowstone? I've been to Yellowstone. Yellowstone's nice. Yeah, the Old Faithful is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just I've, I've had so many nice experiences with my mom at Yosemite. And the first time we went, we stopped in Modesto and bought. Strawberries the size of your fist on the side of the road. And then the last time we went was four years ago. <clears throat> and right at the entrance, because there's people that live right by Yosemite. You know, there's, you know, sometimes in these West, in these national parks in the West Coast, you'll see like a house and like, you know, some people were living there when they called it a national park. <laughs> so there's like some people live right by the entrances. And these people were selling Siamese cherries on the side of the road when we went. And hmm. I'm a I'm a big proponent of roadside fruit stands. And we bought a couple of big bags of those and just ate, um, you know. So whenever we go to Yosemite, there always seems to be some great uh, local fruit attached to the visit. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe I'm I'm high on cherry juice is why I like it so much. No, that's what that's what gets me there is is like the food and the nature are like the things that drive me there. So, so stuff like that is very appealing to me. Um, what about White Sands National Monument? Have you seen that? Where's in, that? It's in New Mexico. There's a lot of stuff filmed I, out there. I've been to the Painted Desert. I don't I don't think I've ever been to White Sands. It's very near, very near that. Um, we went there last summer. It was just. If you hadn't been there, it's it's another one of those very cool, uh, like wow, this is just right up the road, <laughs> you know. It just does. It just doesn't seem like it fits anywhere. It's just pure white sand as far as the eye can see. It's just kind of mind blowing. Um, I haven't I I haven't been that many places. My like I said, my bucket list is as big as all the places you've been. So as soon as this bad boy opens up again, I've got some places to go. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I want to, I want to, um, I, I, you know, I, I drove, used to drive all over America and, um, you know, doing comedy gigs. There's so much to see, especially on the West coast and, uh, Arizona and Utah and Oregon and Washington, Montana, Wyoming. Uh, I'm looking forward to after all this stuff. Uh, I, I think I'm going to stick uh, mostly to uh, Western states doing gigs for a while. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm supposed to do uh, Austin, Texas in October for one night. Um, and I got to go to Florida in July. My June in Europe was just canceled. And um, I think I'm in Chicago in October, but other than that, I might um, <clears throat> kind of stick to the West coast and I want to uh, really uh, explore and get off on all these that great nature stuff, you know. Drive rather than fly, in other words. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for a while. Mm-hmm. That's great. Yeah, the 101 is just gorgeous, and I mean, all, just driving through the redwoods and. Yeah, right. I was up in the redwoods right before all this hit. Uh, I do this gig in Arcata, which is in where Humboldt State is, mm-hmm. right in the way top of uh, California, and then I did Portland the week after. <clears throat> so my girlfriend who lives in Portland, uh, we drove down and we, it's called the Avenue of Giants mm-hmm. where all these redwoods are. Uh, Redwood National Forest actually isn't um, as great as some other um, 
splotches of redwoods. Uh, Fern Canyon is amazing. There's a lot of really great stuff. I went to the uh, Jedediah State Park, that area. Um, we saw um, the uh, Bernie Falls. Have you heard of those? Uh-uh. They were, they were, that was... That was some of the coolest stuff I'd ever seen. It was everything was covered in moss. I'm sure it looked a lot kind of like Ireland is what it, from photos of that that I've seen. Just everything was covered in lush green moss, and then the uh, waterfall was just this, this very blue green haze from the from the morning fog. It was just r- really majestic. Um, cool. And well, it just Kenya's far from there. Mm. <clears throat> I have no idea the the how close those things are. I know it was very near Jedediah, but um, it was just you know one of these little side somebody who had lived there told me about it. Even the there was no signs or anything, and we just had to park on the side of a road and take a little local walking path, and it was just this breathtaking waterfall <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere, uh, surrounded by redwoods. You know, just gorgeous. Yeah, that's it's just amazing stuff, and there's no one there. You can yeah. have it all to yourself. There was nobody there. It's incredible. Incredible, man. Well, um, I mean, I could sit, I could pick your brain all day and all <laughs> night. <laughs> all right, uh, just a couple more minutes, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say good night. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's see what, see what else I wrote down here. Oh yeah, I, I, um, I had a question for you. <clears throat> okay, say you didn't get the. Um, you know, the luck of having your mom as a quarantine partner, which seems to be just the perfect fit for you. And on the last day, you got stuck with one of two people. And these are two people that you know that seem very... I don't know them, obviously, personally, but it would be very uh, difficult to quarantine, I feel like, with either one of these people. Uh, and who would you pick? <laughs> Either Burt Kreischer or Bobby Lee. Talking a six month <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, uh, you know, Bert's from Florida. He and I, um, um, we have a lot in common on, um, just, uh, growing up in Florida. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd be happy to have either, either one of those fine gentlemen. <laughs> and I would cook every meal for them, like cooking for my mother. And I would beat them at Scrabble every day. Like I'm beating my mother at Scrabble every day. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know if you – Scrabble sounds like a very – like you have to have a, a lot of a focus <laughs> attention on that. But uh, it, it seems very interesting. Um, I, I tried to imagine both scenarios and who would drive you craziest first. But um, they both seem like great dudes. Uh, it just kind of seems yeah, like – Other guys are really, you know – energetic and uh you know powerful on stage and you know they're 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 both um gentle um kittens off stage they're both like super nice guys and either one of those guys would be um uh a, a lovely quarantine partner okay well that's good to know that's good to know. They, 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 they seem like sweet guys. Just uh, like it seems like you would have to do a little bit of wrangling almost every day. Like, no, dude, like, it's dinner. You know, Bert always doesn't have his shirt off. I mean, you know, he's not always um, he's not always a lunatic. Bert's fun, and so is Bobby. Both of those guys are really fun guys. I like uh, I like fun people. So they're very energetic. Know, yeah. As long as it wasn't somebody crabby and negative or bitter with a shitty outlook on life. Um, Either one of those guys would be a peach. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, I didn't. I didn't get that question in right. I was. <laughs> let's see. Who would be crabby? No. <clears throat> I was trying to think of. Uh, yeah, some of the um, more quirky comedians rather than the the crabby. But you're right. That would just ruin a quarantine. Getting stuck with somebody who just hated life and just everything's over. Nah, man. <laughs> Everything we've worked for, it's over. <clears throat> I just, that's, uh, my heart goes out to you guys who really spent, you know, decades honing in on this and everything just, you just, just hang on. <laughs> You're not going to be able to practice what you do best. So my heart goes out to you guys and, uh, you know, to the rest of the people, obviously that are, that are having to step out of their routine. Um, 
but I, you know, I, I, I do believe that um, we're on the right road here trying to find some, some positive uh, spin to all of this. So, so get smart and, um, you know, better yourself during this time. Right. Amen. Yeah, no, I get, you know, uh, it, it, it's time to dive into things you're interested in and, you know, um, those projects that you've, you've never had full time for, you know, like, um, me focusing on my book. And I, I think it was a good time for the whole world to, to reset the way they, they did things. So, you know, we'll see what life looks like on the other side of this and how soon will people want to gather in crowds again? You know, yeah. well, I'll be there in Austin, man. If, if, uh, you know, all goes well and, and it's open in October, I'll be there. I'll, I'll drag cat out too. She's a night cat. So we'll, well, we'll I love cat. Yeah. Tell yeah. her I said hello. I will. I will. And the state of Texas has been very good. You know, two places in my career, <clears throat> I think, have been really great to me: Ireland and Texas. Hmm. Uh, I've I've always had great work in Ireland and Texas uh, for my whole career. So those the my the places I, I've kind of always been able to um, uh, rely on for having knowing that um, some people there like me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, of course, we love you here. Well, there's been enough people that give a shit about me in Ireland and Texas to keep me in business. So thank Good. you, Texas. <laughs> yeah, I speak for Texas. We love you. <clears throat> so. Texas means friend. Does it? I don't know. I don't know if it does. Does it Texas mean friend? <laughs> Dude, if it does, I'm embarrassed that I don't know that. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> I know yeah. I know how to pronounce it in Spanish. Tejas. That's the only variation. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to have to look cool. that up. Okay, Chaz. I'm going to uh, – I got to um, watch more country music with my mother. And uh, it's really good talking to you, man. Thank I really, you, man. really – thank you for the love. Uh, you know, you always give me on Instagram and um, – you know, I really uh, appreciate having this conversation with you. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I hope uh, I hope I see you in October, my friend. Yes, sir. Stay safe and uh, take care of your mama. I will, my brother. Long right. may you run. Yes, sir. You too. Peace. <laughs>